next segment of the Klingberg Wing Mark II development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. I'm the developer of the original Klingberg Wing. Today I'm going to be discussing uh, some SPARCAP development work that I'm doing. As you can see, we're going to make parts today. I got my epoxy t-shirt on. In a little bit here, we're going to be gluing parts together. But first I want to talk about the materials that I'm looking at for the SPARCAP. These are unidirectional carbon fiber rods. Uh, these come manufactured this way. You can buy them off the shelf. Uh, they are extremely strong in tensile strength. Uh, this rod, one of these rods, is good for 320,000 PSI, meaning an individual rod can carry thousands of pounds of load, which is essential for my wing. At 6 G's loading, this wing has approximately 30,000 pounds of load in the spar caps. So with uh, about 30 of these, these are a sixteenth of an inch in diameter, with about 30 of these across the top and bottom of the wing, I can carry 6 G's of load. Uh, they are uh, cost effective, they're not inexpensive, uh, but when you consider the labor involved in laying up unidirectional carbon fiber, uh, this can be quite effective. These are also 40 to 50 percent stronger than any wet layup a home builder could do. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to take, oh, what do I got of these? I got five of these that I'm going to bond together into a package on the mold of the D tube leading edge. Because the airfoil is curved top and bottom and angled relative to the main spar, it's essential that these cap strips be molded to match the curve of the airfoil. Otherwise, when the D-tube and trailing edges are bonded on, the airfoil would have a flat spot where the main spar is. So even though this surface might look flat to you, it actually has a curve to it. That's the actual airfoil shape of the wing. And I'm going to mold uh, these uh, graphite rods to the shape of the wing. What you see here, this red line here, represents the center line of the main spar of the wing. And nominally, I would have 15 or 16 of those rods in front of the red line, same number after the red line. So we have a symmetrical cap strip. The other thing that I'm going to be doing today is a layup that leaves one end of these rods free for flexing. And if you go look at the other segment about the wing joiner spar cap uh, combination, you'll see why it's essential to have uh, the end of these rods free to bend back this way. So I'm going to be packaging these up where they're bonded together halfway down their length and leave the other end open for flexing. What I've done here is I've prepared the mold uh, with a, a layer of packing tape on top that provides my mold release. And then I'm going to lay in uh, some 1.8 ounce Dacron as a peel ply layer so that'll go on there. The rods will go, excuse me, <laughs> they don't actually go that way. Uh, we're going to have the carbon fiber here like this. And then the rods go on top like this. And there'll be another layer of carbon fiber. And then there'll be another layer of peel ply. And nominally, uh, I'll put another layer of plastic over the top of this. And we'll vacuum bag it down. Uh, so, uh, pretty typical layup uh, process. Uh, the only difference is that we have pre-cured carbon fiber rods in between. Uh, after I'm done, I'm going to uh, trim off the excess carbon fiber so there'll be just a packet of these rods bonded together by lightweight carbon fiber cloth on either side. This carbon fiber cloth, by the way, is about two and a half ounce. It's very lightweight. It's a little spendy, runs about $60, $65 a yard, but it doesn't take much to bond up these uh, rods. And you don't want to use thicker graphite cloth because the strength really isn't needed. This is really needed just to hold the rods together while it's being bonded into the rest of the uh, structure of the aircraft. So, uh, in a moment here, we're going to begin. Uh, I'll mix up some epoxy and then I'll be back and we'll get started. Okay, here we are. I've uh, masked off uh, the rods uh, here where I want the uh, carbon fiber overwrap to end and the amount that I want to leave uh, available for, for flexing uh, is off to that end. And I'm going to begin the bonding process by first tack gluing together the 
carbon fiber rods with just a little bit of CA just to keep a nice neat package uh, that's easier to work with when it comes to overall bonding so put a little bit of CA on here hope you can see this I'm going to hit it with a little accelerator to cure it quickly I'm going to hold that with a thumb there I'm going to come down here part way and just put a little bit more CA on here spread that out a bit we don't want to have too much we want to leave most of it available for bonding to the epoxy uh, manufacturer of the rod says that there's no additional uh, prep needed uh, for these rods no sanding so forth before you bond up with your laminating resin however I would suggest that if you've handled the lot rods a lot uh, without gloves on you may have put uh, quite a bit of skin oil on them and it might be advantageous to use some alcohol to clean off that skin oil so now we have them bonded together into a package uh, that'll be easy to work with and we can begin the uh, process of uh, bonding on the outer skins of graphite to hold it together as a package to start, let's get the carbon fiber rods out of the way. I'll set these down back here. I'm going to take a piece of the uh, peel ply, get this laid up on the mold here, approximately where the parts are going to go, something like that. I'm going to lay on a strip of the carbon fiber cloth, masking tape side down. We're going to trim that off later. It'll go on here like this. We can now wet this out with uh, some of the laminating resin. I like to use these disposable brushes. I buy them off of Amazon by, you know, 50 or so in a box. And just discard them when you're done. Very handy that way. And maybe I'll put some uh, music on while I work here so you can listen as we go along. It's kind of a boring process. I can tell you that uh, you'll notice one end of the cloth here has been angled off. That's been done for a specific reason. Uh, in this video, I'm going to keep it a secret though. You're going to have to go watch my other video on the wing joiner to find out why that carbon fiber cloth is angled at the end here. It's uh, an interesting and important aspect of this lamp. So please, go see my other videos. If you get bored watching this, eh, maybe you can pause and go over and watch the original Klingberg wing fly at Point of the Mountain, Utah, or some of the other videos that I have on my channel. And uh, hopefully you'll get a little bit of the joy of watching a pure flying wing fly and see how beautiful they really can be. So there we go, we have that wetted out. That's nice. This is gonna be pretty easy. These rods, essentially the shape that we need uh, for uh, the airfoil because they've been CA glued to, together ahead of time. I'm going to lay this in such that the masking tape uh, is at the end of the angled portion of the rods. Just like that. Make sure that's well secured down. I'm going to come in with a little extra resin here uh, at the edges and on top to make sure that there's uh, the rods are fully wetted out. Ro resin will run down in between the rods where there's an open spot. Let me get the back side here. There we go. Make sure that's nice and wet. Now it had crossed my mind that uh, one does not want to damage these carbon fiber rods when we're trimming off the excess carbon fiber cloth. That would be bad. Uh, so I've set up for some spacers here that will um, allow me to I can remove these spacers after it's all cured these are just little strips of 16th inch thick balsa that happens to match the rods and I covered them with packing tape so that they won't stick to the epoxy and I'm slipping them in here alongside the carbon fiber rods so that when time comes, let me flip that open over the other way, we'll get a little better fit there. This is an experiment for me. I've never done this before, so you're, you're joining along with the joys of will it work, will it not work. 
So there we go, we have those in there. This will allow me to take those out after the cure, and that way I'll have a clean edge that I can trim off the carbon fiber cloth without worrying about damaging the rods underneath. And of course the rods are critical, they're the ones that are going to carry all the load. So let's get the second layer on here of cloth. Get that laid in. And we're going to get a little bit more resin on here. Make sure we get this all wetted out. Get the angled end lined up with the first layer. And maybe a little more music in the background here. And we'll keep you mildly entertained while we go through the boring part of wetting this out. And there we go. There's the end of the rods are there. We got a little extra cloth, that's okay. So, when this is all said and done and cured up, we should have a nice little carbon fiber cocoon that the rods reside in that is shaped exactly to the shape of the D-tube uh, for the weight. And that will allow me to handle the spar cap package uh, as one unit and laminate it into the final structure. Of course, we're looking at just five rods today. Uh, I wasn't going to drop a bunch of bucks uh, laying up all 30 rods. And quite often it's easier to understand these processes and change and adapt them as needed by starting out small and working up to final size or quantities at a later time. Make sure we get all the wrinkles and air holes out of this. Most of that will be taken care of by the airbag, or excuse me, the vacuum bag. Uh, as soon as I get the other layer of peel ply put on here. When I put on peel ply, I like to press it down and make sure that I got resin coming up through the peel ply. And that ensures that I'll have a nice surface for uh, bonding after the fact, after this is cured. They call that a secondary bond or a post-cure bond. And this ensures that the surface is properly prepared, grease-free, resin wax-free, and rough enough to give you a good bond to the structural adhesive that's going to hold these parts to other structural components of the wing. A little extra resin here on the overlap. Now, uh, in the magic of movie making, I'm going to go away now. I'm going to trim this up. I'm going to put a vacuum bag on this. We're going to vacuum bag it. And we're going to come back tomorrow after this is all cured up and take a look and see what we got. It'll be interesting. Thanks for showing up. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back in a little bit. And we're back. As you can see, I've removed the bundle of uh, carbon fiber rods from the mold. Uh, everything's cured up. I've trimmed off the edges of the carbon fiber cloth that's bonding the rods together and overall I'm very pleased with the results. I'm sure it's very difficult to see in the video maybe if I can get some different lighting angles on this you might be able to see that the cloth is nice and tight to the rods there's no dip in between the rods the epoxy resin filled in quite nicely and uh, even though you can't see it I can feel with my hands there's a slight curve to this uh, representing the sh correct shape of the airfoil, uh, which I'm very pleased with. It, it mimicked that shape quite well. It was very easy to mold it on the same mold that's used to make the D-tube. Uh, the angle cut on the carbon fiber fabric is working as expected. These rods will flare out here on, uh, on an angle, each one beginning its uh, bend at a slightly different location. Uh, you'll see the reason for that when you go watch the wing joiner video. And I'm really quite pleased. Uh, I think I'm going to move ahead with using these rods on the full-scale aircraft. And 40% stronger, can't go wrong with that, uh, for essentially the same weight. Um, probably the only thing that I would change is uh, the fabric uh, upper and lower surface. Uh, we had used the spacers uh, and to allow a trim location to trim that fabric to the edge of the rods without damaging the rods. And that went well, but it's probably unnecessary. 
uh, I've decided that it'd be better to make that fabric uh, a little bit wider than the stack of rods and just bring the upper surface down and made it to the lower surface, bond them together in a complete sandwich, and then trim the edge. And that'll leave us with a small flange beyond the rod bundle uh, for bonding to the main spar. That'll give us a little more bonding area, make it easier to handle. We don't have to worry about damaging the rods and it'll make a, a nice package for building into the wing. So, very pleased, uh, and I'm glad you decided to join me for this episode. I hope you take a look at my other videos, and subscribe, and follow along as I develop my aircraft, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for coming. Bye.